Hello, and today I'm going to show you a bit more that I'm doing. Last night it was raining heavily and I was laying in bed and I was thinking, how am I going to align everything in this watch? Uh, make sure that everything's where it needs to be. And so it went through my head that I should design a little um, tool that I can use to keep everything in alignment uh, when I'm trying to connect things together or uh, cut grooves uh, drill holes uh, where they need to be so I'm going to construct that I'm using silver just because I've got silver to hand uh, it might be a little bit wasteful to use precious metals for such a temporary thing but I can always melt this down afterwards and it I can use the material for something else like uh, sizing rings or uh, maybe I'll draw it into wire um, but I'm not too concerned the first thing is uh, I'm going to cut this strip off clean up the silver edges a little bit uh, just cut through here it's deep enough it doesn't need to be any wider than this so I've probably gone a little bit on the wide side anyway but that's okay it gives me something to get hold of and I'm just uh, filing away some of the saw blade marks uh, from where I've cut this I'll take the plastic off it in a minute as well um, I've got that little copper disc that I made before that's got a hole in it uh, I'm not going to be using that anymore but I'm using it as a guide to roughly what size I need to turn this thing using the half round pliers again uh, silver one millimeter sheet isn't isn't too tough to bend so I just make this into a ring I'm not worry too much whether I put dents in this it's uh, not for show really it's just a functional item and hence I'm not going to finish it to too high a standard I'm just offering it up there seeing that it needs to be a little bit bigger and then cutting it through with a fret saw it's impossible to get solder to run across a gap uh, you need both surfaces to be touching each other uh, hopefully touching each other all the way along the join so I'm just trying to get these in alignment I can see this one needs flattening off slightly so that it's got a better surface one little trick you can use is once you've got them fairly close together uh, you can gently saw th through the gap and that will basically use the saw as a file to make sure that both surfaces are in good contact and I'm trying to get the edge aligned now I don't show you my solder but I've soldered this now and uh, it took quite a while to solder my little blowtorch isn't really up to the job of anything with any weight in it uh, the heat seems to escape just as quickly as you apply it so now I'm tapping it round and a triplet is slightly conical as you can see it gets bigger as it goes along so it's always worth switching it round regularly 
um, so that you don't end up with a tapered ring. And this just goes through the middle at the moment, so it's still too small. I'm going to anneal it when you tap the metal, as I've explained before. All the molecules end up packed together and unwilling to move. So you just need to get the metal glowing red. And then you can carry on working it and it will be reset. Now this is fairly close to size. Just about squeezes through there. So I'm going to put a bottom on it now because I need a piece of material underneath it where I can see where the center is. So I'm describing roughly what I want to chop off I'm going to chop that off with my fret saw and this tray that I'm using underneath to catch all the dust um, is a little bit irritating to me so I decided I'm going to uh, put a hole in the corner so that I can hook it to the bench um, make it you know, stop it sliding around possibly falling off my lap and uh, so I started to make a bracket for it uh, and I used a big drill and drilled into a piece of copper that I had lying around and as the drill broke the surface of the metal it gripped the metal and span it round so I managed to give myself quite a nasty cut on my index finger. It was a short cut. Uh, well, I suppose it was about three quarters of an inch long, um, but quite deep. Went down to the bone and squirted blood everywhere. So at the moment, I'm uh, my hands are okay in this video, but in the next section, I'm trying not to use my index finger. Um, the solution I always use to these problems is uh, super glue. Super glue is very good at uh, uh, gluing skin together, as you probably all know. Um, and so I just super glued the cut shut. Now I'm trying to solder this to the um, the plate, and you saw that I drilled a hole in it and marked a circle so that I can try and get it central. Uh, I tried with hard solder, with medium solder, and finally I managed it with easy solder. Uh, the easy solder didn't even really want to run that much, because this torch is too small to solder uh, big objects. I need, a, I need to be able to apply heat more quickly, and the, the easy solder rolled up into a bit of a ball. Uh, didn't really want to interact with the material. I gave it a little jab with this uh, scriber and it, it just uh, convinced it that it needed to interact and then it, it, fl it flowed through the gap and so it's tacked on there it's not the best uh, solder joint in the world but it's sufficient and after cleaning up the the protruding material with the file it's roughly taking the form that I need it to not polishing this or anything it's just uh, utilitarian so just trying to keep it round and 
Then we'll have a look to see whether it is the right size. There we go. So it is the right size to align these things. It's quite a tight fit at the moment, but once I buff the inside of the hull, it will probably be a little bit looser. If it needs to be tighter, I can always put a bit of sellotape around the outside or something. Uh, it's got a hole in the center. I'm gonna put a pin in that and I'll be able to drop it on top of the dial and it will hold the dial in the correct position relative to these bezels, which I'll be able to feed over the top that way I can drill things and know that they're in the correct position without worrying about everything sliding around because there's multiple layers to this watch and they all need to line up in a orderly fashion. So that's that. Um, next I decide that I'm going to continue working on the bezel that goes around the watch movement i need it so that the hole that i've drilled for the button and stem is closer to the dial uh, and i'm therefore just thinning it down slightly it's when you're working on something like this uh, actually moving it against the file often keeps it nice and flat uh, but using the file as it as I am here allows you to take off material where you want to take it off and still trying to keep it fairly flat but I want that button and stem close to the dial the um, the bit which uh, holds the hands the uh, the shank that goes through the dial is um, quite short so if there's any gap between the dial and the movement, the hands will probably touch the dial of the watch, which I don't want. And so I'm just uh, thinning this down a bit. I'm doing the, the one side uh, closest to the dial because once it's soldered onto the dial, I'll be able to do the other side more easily. Um, so that's the, the movement there sitting on the dial. And I'm trying to ascertain whether more material needs to come off or not. Um, and I think it does. So I'll continue with this a little bit further. And um, I should have a t new torch coming soon. Uh, that will allow me to do my proper joins better. Get the... Uh, the solder flowing all the way around what nice solid joins even though um, maybe i only need to tack it the solder joins are very strong so i don't really need to overkill but i like these things to be soldered nicely and i've got other issues to think about too how thick the watch is going to be um, this bezel is one and a half millimeters and it's going to be sitting on a, a sheet which is half a millimeter so that's two millimeters um, and then the dial on top is another half millimeter and uh, then you have two millimeters uh, above it so that is two uh, two and a half, four and a half millimeters thick, which is going to mean that I think I'm going to have to do something with the button. Um, maybe I'm going to have to make my own button to go on the end of the stem. Um, because there's not a lot of room for a decent size one, but that's okay. Um, Uh, there we go that's two millimeters plus the half a millimeter which is going to be behind it 
uh, it's two and a half millimeters plus the dials another half a millimeter that's three millimeters so it's going to be in total five millimeters thick um, that would allow me to get away with using the but the uh, proper button except for the fact that i don't believe the stem's going to be absolutely central within that five millimeters uh, so i might still need to create a button but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it uh, this is still slightly smaller than the movement so i can't put the movement fully in it but once it's soldered to the dial i'm gonna hollow out a little bit and adjust it so that the movement kind of clips into it and uh, that's it for today thanks for watching